I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page, and I have a very special guest with me, my co-worker, cohort in crime here at MACNY, Julianne P. So, Julianne, welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Glad you're here. And so, Julianne, how long have you been at MACNY? I've been at MACNY for a little over a year, which is exciting. We've been doing a lot of great things here, so... Great. And you recently received a a promotion. I did. So I'm now the, it's a mouthful, manager of member engagement and community outreach. Wow. Member, manager of member (laughs) engagement and community outreach. Does that have to be like continued on the back of a business card or is it just another line? (laughs) Almost. That's great. So tell me, what does that entail? So I work with a lot of our members, our individual members and planning events um, for our members and making Mm -hmm. them really awesome experiences for them to come to. Um, and always trying to find ways to make the membership better for our members so that they're getting value out of it. Awesome. Great. So, and where did you work prior to joining MACNY? So before MACNY, I was in a slew of places. Um, I was actually in Philadelphia for college. So I stayed down there and worked, um, for, it was Cradles to Cran. So that was my first real job out of college. It was a nonprofit and did volunteer management and, um, some fundraising there. And then I was at a bank, um, Beneficial Bank. They're the largest uh, and oldest bank in Philadelphia. Okay. And I worked in corporate giving there. Then I was with the March of Dimes most recently, and then I'm here and at Mackey now. Here. <laughs> Good. So one of the things that I've noticed since you came is Mackney has a focus on charitable work. Yes. So... What draws you to that? And I know I gave you a list of questions, and you're going to find out, mm-hmm. like, I never follow my questions. Oh, it's okay. I've got but some good notes here. What, what draws you to that side of customer, or not customer, but community mm-hmm. service? Yeah, so when my, um, in my first job at Curtis to Crayons, um, it really drove me to be passionate about giving back to the community. Uh, the, the nonprofit organization that I worked for uh, supported children that lived in poverty in Philadelphia, mm. and that was a really high percentage. Wow. Um, there was over, I think it was one in two children in the greater Philadelphia area that lived in extreme poverty. Wow. And that's a household income of less than $24,000. So oh, my goodness. So that's what I really liked doing. So we worked with organizations to do clothing drives, school supply drives, to really give those kids the basic essentials, and it, and it kind of went mm. from there. We utilized over 2,000 volunteers a month to get wow. everything that we needed to do done. Wow. Um, so that really kept me going because we had so many um, support systems and companies down there that really supported the mission. And then when I worked for Beneficial Bank on the opposite side of corporate giving, I really liked being on the side of helping to decide where their um, community investment money went. Okay. So I got even more involved with organizations down there. Um, 50% of my job was volunteering. I would organize uh, volunteer visits for 56 different bank branches between Pennsylvania and Southern New Jersey. Wow. So I was on both sides of Pennsylvania and New Jersey volunteering. And just to see the commitment of everyone come together for a greater cause was really, really awesome. What was your degree in? What did you, what did you go to school for? So my undergraduate is in management and marketing, and then I also have my MBA. So okay. all kind of all-encompassing. Yeah, really. That, but, that's exciting. But even growing up um, in high school... All four years of high school, I took a mission trip to Mexico all four years with okay. my um, was my dad most of the time and um, other local community members, and we helped to build different buildings in areas that weren't as well off. So it's kind of been in my family and sure. in my blood as, as far as I've known. So, and, and those who have attended our clan base have seen your dad, but maybe not known <laughs> him as your dad because he, yes. he helps out at the clan base. He loves helping. He just, which he, I thought was great. Yeah. It's great to meet him. So... Why do you, why if I was if I'm a member company here at Macney, why should I care about what's going on in the community? I think it's just really important to care about everything that's going on in the community. Everything that a company does affects the community. Whether mm-hmm. you're a manufacturing company, you're supplying jobs to local community members, or maybe even you're donating products back to local not organizations if you're a you're a food manufacturer. So sure. um, I think it's just really important to be um, overall connecting um, and just do good for the community. It's just really good for your soul, the company. Um, it looks good in the public to get your name out there, exposure as well, and just um, boots on the ground. And that's what a lot of volunteer organizations really need is, is the manpower. Sure, so. sure. So what are some of the, and, and I agree with you 100%, I, I think that um, 
you know, I, I was really fortunate when, when I was at Self-Lock, um, that the time that I was there, the, the ownership allowed me to put into our, our, our annual business plan that 10% of our profits would go directly to charity. That's amazing. And, and we also, every year, um, we ran a United Way campaign mm -hmm. and 16 out of the 18 years that I was there, we had a hundred percent participation. Awesome. And, and the one story that I love to tell, uh, because it's, it's really about the, the, the employees that were there is, is one year. We also had them one year. They, um, they came to me and they said, we're going to volunteer at this school. Can you get us some t-shirts? And I said, well, I don't know how to get t-shirts painted. So somebody said, well, just go out and get these iron on things and we'll make the, the logos. And they literally made, I bought them the t-shirts. They made the iron on things just so they could go work and paint a high, uh, an elementary school. But one year, um, and this was right when the, uh, the great recession hit hit. So it was probably 2008, 2007, 2008, 2009, one, somewhere in there. Uh, Cause I don't remember the exact year and we were doing really well in terms of surviving it. And then all of a sudden we got to this one point and our customers shut off the orders. So we had gone through a difficult time. Unfortunately, we went from a work share thing of four days a week working one day layoff. And then it was three days a week working two days layoff. And, and then where they could get unemployment. And then I didn't have enough people there that I needed there. So I said, I just, I got to do a, a layoff. And so we laid off about 30% of the staff. Fortunately, it was very short. Mm -hmm. And my reason for sharing this is it, it has impact in the end of the story. Sure. So we, we finally bring everybody back. Um, we brought all but three people back. One gentleman had found a job and, and the other two people, it, they, they just, it wasn't going to be a, a good fit anymore for the company. Um, but so that, so everybody's back by spring. In September, I do my kickoff for the United Way. So I get the pizza and the wings and I'm getting ready to pre prepared for what's probably going to be a very difficult sell because mm -hmm. we had frozen wages. Okay. So I'm, I get done with my spiel that I always do about, you know, we need to give back and it was from the heart. We need to give back to the community. This is why this is the organizations that, that the United Way type of thing supports. And one of my machine operators, Marsha, she says, can I say something, please? And I said, yeah, absolutely. And you know, Marsha was a great worker. She always spoke her mind. So I was never really sure what Marcia was going to say. Uh, but she turns to her coworkers and says, guys, there's a lot of people in our industry that don't have a job anymore. And we're fortunate enough to be working. We need to dig deep this year. And like, I couldn't have said it better. The hourly workers that year increased their giving to the United Way by 29%. Wow. In a year when their wages were frozen. Wow. Yeah. You know, they, now what they didn't know was that our year was ending well and I was going to give it all back. You know, the, the, they were going to get a nice bonus. They were going to get raises again, but they didn't know that at that time. Mm -hmm. So that's when it told me that they understood the need for giving back to the community. And, and what I find is that companies that have a conscience to give back have more engaged workers. Absolutely. The workers are engaged. So I think that's, that's great. So what, in what areas have, have you been able to direct MACME? Like what types of operations or collections or whatever sure. have we been able to do since you came? Sure. So when I started, um, a couple months after we held a diaper drive for the central New York diaper bank, uh, which Marissa and I are, uh, part of their young professionals board of directors now awesome. that we started off. Great. So we did a diaper drive for them. Um, and how, so a diaper drive. So how many diapers does this organization need or use? Uh, a lot. So there's uh 50% of children that live in the Syracuse area live in poverty. Wow. Um, and they have 18 uh, local partner agencies like okay. Beer House, Samaritan mm -hmm. Center, Rescue Mission, all those places. Um, but they are up to giving out 60,000 diapers a month in total. Wow. And there's, there's still a need. So they started, um, Michaela Hugo started it about two and a half years ago. And they started out, I think, only giving out like 10,000 diapers a month. So being up to 60,000 diapers a month is, is amazing. That, I can't fathom that. And so each child gets uh, a total of 50 diapers a month. And it's meant to be supplemental. So those families don't have to choose. Sure. On, uh, choose between food or buying right. diapers for their child, you know? Um, but on, after that, we did a canned food collection drive for mm -hmm. Peace Inc. Uh, that coincided with our post-holiday reception. And we thought like, oh, who knows? We'll get we a might, few cans we'll of beans, right? We'll get a few. Right? You never know. But 
we got so so many cans. It was it was an overwhelming amount of stuff, and um, every everyone that was great. whether they came to the holiday reception or not mm-hmm. dropped off donations and. I think all of our members just really liked participating in that. Um, yeah. And not even just around the holiday time. So after that, we did a school supply drive that coincided with our clam bake. We did a sneaker collection for the Ark of Onondaga. Mm-hmm. And we did a blood drive most recently. And then we're preparing to do this uh, this holiday season. We're going to do a mitten, glove, hat, and uh, sock drive. Wow. Um, instead of canned food drive. Sure. Um, I think we just want to switch it up. Marianne okay. uh, came from United Way and suggested that's something that people really need in the winter. They just okay. need warm socks. Sure. Um, because people don't have the appropriate footwear um, in the winter. And, you know, winter's around here. You need to you keep need your feet lot. warm and dry. So So really, those those our listeners that are in the central area should start mm-hmm. stocking up on socks and hats and mittens when they're on sale. Absolutely. Okay. So more to come on that. Okay. Uh, what... What ways, how does, let's say we have a member company, we have somebody in a member company and they want to get involved. What do they do? Sure. I mean, they can definitely jump on to the drives that we're doing right now and, you know, have a sign up in your lunchroom or your break room and send out an email to your employees encouraging them to to donate. Um, If you want to do something different, I think um, you want to align with what your employees are passionate Mm -hmm. about. Sure. Um, Which, I mean, all of our employees here are passionate about everything, so... Um, but if there's a specific focus that your team is interested in, you can kind of do some research on local organizations. I'm happy to help you find those organizations too and make those connections. Good. And I think bringing in a presenter from that organization to talk um, right. is really important and helps empower people as well. Yeah. Um, so those are just a couple ways to do some research. Sure. There's the United Way is full of information as well. We just did our United uh, Way campaign kickoff yep. last week as well. So. They are definitely in touch with uh, all the organizations of what they need, whether it's mm-hmm. product volunteer time, monetary donations. Um, so we're happy to help in any way with that. That's great. You know, and one of the things um, that I always remember and appreciate about the United Way was that they vet the organizations that they support. Absolutely. You know, so they're making sure that the organizations are managing their funds well, that they're not, you know, wasting it, that they've got the controls in place, mm-hmm. which was always really good. One of the things that, that I never realized, you know, there's all kinds of organizations that are there that you don't know they're there until you need them. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I remember when uh, our first grandson was born premature and my daughter had to live in a Ronald McDonald house for 108 days. Mm-hmm. You know, thankfully, there was a really nice one uh, right next to Akron Children's Hospital in Akron, Ohio, because I just would have, you know, I didn't right. know what it was like. Right. And, you know, even so people think, well, the only people that need these things are people that are, you know, low income type of things. You know, my daughter, her husband had a good job. You know, they were middle income kind of people. But you're away from home for 108 days. And I don't unless you're extremely wealthy, you can't afford a hotel. No, not at all. You never know. And I think that's why places like Ronald McDonald have such great partnerships with hospitals and, right. and things like that, because that's that's really where the connection sure. comes from. So, And what I learned then, too, was that, you know, things that you never, ways you never thought you could help. A Ronald McDonald house is always looking for toothbrushes and toothpaste. And, and you know, one of the things my wife does is whenever she goes to the dentist, our, our dentist knows that we had this experience and his, uh, so we, we, we have a great dentist, Dr. Swartwood. I'm going to give him a little shout out here up on Ondaga Hill because he and his wife do an amazing job of, of not just taking care of people's, his wife is, is his, is his hygienist. And, and, uh, but anyways, so Joanne will say to my wife, she'll say, you know, do you need toothpaste? Do you need toothbrushes to give to the United, to give to the Ronald McDonald house type mm-hmm. of thing? And so my wife will come home with bags. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, that's really great. Like you said, you don't know, um, you don't know. until you ask too, because, right. you know, they'd be happy to give. I think that's important because Samaritan Center just started taking items like that too. They have a health exactly. needs closet that yep. um, they can get five items a week and that's stuff, you know, people really, really need. So. Exactly. So I just think people should just think outside the box. Yeah. Um, food. I, one of the things my wife had said, you know, I, I was able to stay with my daughter two nights at, at the Ronald McDonald House in Ohio. And my wife did, I think, a few more nights. But, you know, sometimes they would get in there in the evening and a family would have just cooked a meal for all the people that were in the Ronald McDonald House at that time. Yeah, we did that a couple of times in Philadelphia. It was awesome. The people it are is. just so thankful that yeah. it's one last thing that they have to worry about in a right. hard, in a hard time. 
And it, and I'll tell you, it's when you when you sit through some of those things, you realize how hard some people have it. Absolutely, and I think that then inspires those people that you know went through a hardship. Then when they're out of that hardship, to you know continually get right. back in those ways. So it, it all comes full circle. I feel like it does. It it does. Um, so can one person really make a difference? Absolutely, absolutely, without a doubt. I'll just use an example when we go down to the Samaritan Center. Most people just want, you know, if you smile at them and ask them how they're doing, that's all they really want. They just want to know that someone's interested in talking to them, seeing how their day is going, and just just genuinely caring about them and um, caring about how they're doing that day. And I think that one person, you know, if they were having a bad day and you you smiled and said, how are you doing? That could totally turn their day around and and really help them out. That's 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 awesome. You know, we don't realize what a smile can do. Mm -hmm. And, And it just... It makes you feel better. Absolutely. You know, as, as we, we learned, you weren't with us yet, but when we did our first Live to Lead, uh, Valerie Burton was one of the speakers. And, and she said, even if you take a pencil and put it in between your teeth, which is a forced smile, she said, you will feel, you'll have more positive emotion mm-hmm. just because of the, the way your face is, is forming the smile. Definitely. So giving back, okay, we, we should do it, but what is the person that we shouldn't be doing it because of it for a selfish reason, but a lot of people will just say, Hey, you know, what do I get out of it? Sure. So what do they get out of? So I think personally, volunteer? um, you, you get, you get, uh, you feel better about yourself, yep. about what you're doing for the community. And, um, I think overall in an organization, I have some fun statistics I left out. Share them with us. Um, that a study from Forbes showed that 21%, uh, pr- productivity increased in employees when they were serving their community. So wow. that's a lot of productivity to increase just by doing something good for your community. And, you know, companies would pay large amounts of money to get a 5% increase in productivity. Yeah. And what they don't realize is they just need to get their employees engaged in helping others, which means they're more engaged at work. Absolutely. That's awesome. What else did you find? Uh, 74% of uh, respondents from a Deloitte volunteerism survey said that they had improved sense of purpose. So mm. I think that, again, goes with the productivity. If sure. you feel better about yourself, feel your purpose and work in life, then, of course, you're going to do more. Absolutely. That's another fun statistic. 70, 70% of um, the respondents believe that volunteer activities boosted employee morale more than a company-sponsored happy hour. Wow, that is awesome. So 70% said that volunteering boosted morale more than a happy hour. Yeah. So the company saved money. Absolutely. Because they didn't have to buy all the booze <laughs> for the happy hour. That's that's huge. Yeah. That's and I huge. think going along with that, um, another statistic said 64% of employees who volunteered with their coworkers said it helped strengthen relationships. Sure. So again, tying back to all those um, yeah. good things that they do for companies. Wow. Yeah, I see you got a list here, so keep going. <laughs> okay, we'll go through a while. Um, that 85, 89% believe that companies who partake in volunteer activities offer a better overall working environment than those who do not. Interesting. You know, and I wonder if it's real or perceived. You know, it could be that those companies that are focused on the volunteer things that just are, are focused more on making sure their employees have a better environment. Yeah. But I'm wondering if the employees, so it's one of those things where you don't realize how good you have it until you see somebody who doesn't have it. So, sure. good. so it, it's interesting, but clearly it's, I mean, it's 89%. I think, I think it, it really is. I don't think it's perceived when I worked at Beneficial Bank. I mean, everyone was on board. They really enjoyed doing what they did. They love their jobs. Okay. And you could just tell it when you walked in the building, when you go in the bank That's branches, great. you know, they really just wanted to serve their customers better. Sure. And they did that through, you know, they had their clients and their customers doing the giving back as well. So, wow. Um, a few more. So only 38% of employees think that their companies provide access to employee volunteer programs. So that's a really low number. Yeah. We do have one of our member companies, Chris Tech Wire. They have their Chris Tech Cares, and it was that was one of the programs that was started by last year's Transformational Leadership Award winner, Eric Petrowski, mm-hmm. and where they, and I don't remember exactly the frequency, whether it's once a month or whether it's more frequent, it's at least once a month, where sure. they allow their team to go out into the community on a day when they're getting paid to make a difference. Yeah, a lot of companies have That's volunteer huge. time off. When I was in Philly, there was, there was plenty of organizations, um, but I, I think it's, it's great when they, when all of your employees, you know, set a standard of 
that that giving program. Yeah. The four, you know, pillars of what you want to do sure. and give back to. And I think that really helps drive it. Sure. And I'm sure that's what Chris Tech has in their program too. So I'm, I'm certain of it. Yeah. Anything else on your list? Well, let's see. Um, which many probably know, 56% of Americans would choose to work for a socially responsible company, even if the salary would be less than at other companies. Um, and then that number jumps up to 62% when it comes to millennials. So I think, you know, being a millennial, yep. it just just really comes full circle. I mean, you're, you're doing good for your company. You want to do mm-hmm. good for the community. And then, you know, it just it all comes back um, together for the good of everything. That is. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm one of those people that believes that communities offer manufacturers that's and that's our primary focus area. Um, a workforce, you know, um, they, they offer us the opportunity to pursue our objectives of producing a product mm-hmm. and you have to give back, you know, for, for years, I, I believe there was a time when corporations were more focused on, on social awareness. Um, and then I think we, we got to a point where corporations became greedy and they focused on you know, stockholder value, shareholder value, and they really didn't care enough about employees and about the communities. And I, and I love the fact that you have to give back, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's our responsibility to have a, be a force for good in our communities, not just the wages we pay, but are we making a difference in the communities in which we live? And, And one of the things is, you know, when I, when I hear the statistics of the poverty in Syracuse, you know, um, it's, it's tragic. And I, and I love the fact that through MACNY's, I'll call it our, our umbrella, the MACNY umbrella with PEB, Partners for Education and Business, working in the schools, and now the pre-apprentice program, where the focus is really getting kids opportunities to learn good paying jobs without going into debt hundreds of thousands of right. dollars. That's part of it as well. Absolutely. You know, being able to help these kids see a future. Um, you know, not too long ago, our, our city lost who I would refer to as our, one of our, our conscience when, when Clarence Jordan passed away. Um, but Clarence, you know, for our listeners, they, they know what he did with the rescue mission. And then he went on to, to work with, to start, if I'm not mistaken, Mercy Works, which has the vision center, which is about a whole point is giving young people a vision for the future. Right. And, and I just think that it all wraps up here. And, and I remember when I went to the calling hours for Clarence and I spoke to his wife, you know, um, there's a big hole in central New York. And it's such a big hole with Clarence gone that not one person can do it. Right. So we need everybody to step up. Absolutely. And see what they can do to do their part, stand in the gap. Absolutely. And clearly the statistics you gave us, and, and those are the same statistics, you know, that are in my post that came out this morning as well it's the right thing to do in terms of business not just the social piece right. and i like the fact that that here's evidence again that if organizations take care of their people and their community they will be successful definitely anything else you'd want to say to us for us no i think that's about it i think we covered everything but if anyone needs help uh, with a volu- starting a volunteer program or anything like that Feel free to reach out to me. Happy to help and connect you with a lot of our local nonprofit organizations. And if they can go to macney.org and they'll find your contact information. Absolutely. (laughs) How's Marissa? Marissa is good. We just saw each other last night at a plant night fundraiser for the diaper bank, which was really fun. So a plant night fundraiser. Yeah, it was a little terrarium that we made, and um, the tickets were fifty dollars, but then fifteen dollars of every ticket was donated right back to the diaper Super. bank. Mm-hmm. Super. And we did a couple raffles and we were able to raise over um, six hundred and fifty dollars. So awesome. With our young professionals group. So So she's doing well. She's very well. Little girls are doing well. Yeah, both the girls are doing well. Good. Can't wait to see what they're gonna be for Halloween. Not too far fun. away. <laughs> that would be awesome. Do you think we might get a a, a peak? We might. We, we might. might. We have okay. a Halloween parade here Matt we do. Me with a the kitties, so yep. she might make an appearance. I don't know. That would be awesome. Well, yeah. when you talk to her, tell her we miss her. We will. I will. I'll tell her, and I'm sure she'll be listening. So <laughs> I hope so. She needs to. She needs to keep me honest to make sure I didn't, you know, mess any of this stuff up. Oh, I think we're good. Good. Well, awesome. thank you so much again. And uh, so with that, I'm Dave Freud, and this was the next page. Mm-hmm.